Hey, what's going on guys? It's Omniarch and today I wanted to make a quick video talking to you about 100 Thieves. Um, if you guys didn't know, and I, I do realize I'm a little late to the party, but I haven't had a chance to actually make a video about this, talking about it, giving my opinions, but and again, uh, 100 Thieves, if you haven't heard about it, it is Nadeshot's new team. Um, he actually created, I guess, his own Call of Duty competitive team. Um, it was a pre-existing team that he was able to, you know, uh, become involved with, I guess, purchase. I don't know what the team's uh, situation was before this. So while we're not sure how this is going to play out in terms of whether or not he stays on Optic or if he's under the Optic brand uh, still or, or you know, how the uh, sponsors with that are going to conflict and uh, the fact that, you know, they might be competing against Optic at some point, potentially not in BO3 maybe, but in the next game uh you know when there's roster changes and things and they're able to get better players um and there's that i'm not saying that the players are are bad by any means um but they did get i think uh they did lose their second match uh, this past weekend or week or something like that i don't know um but yeah so basically if you guys didn't know nature has a new team it's called 100 thieves and we don't know what uh, what his status is with optic currently I just wanted to uh, kind of get my opinions on this and I know that you know my opinions don't really matter as far as this whole thing goes um, it's not like he's gonna see this uh, nade shot and being isn't gonna really see this video anyway um, but I just wanted to give you know my two cents on what I think it is going to happen um, I did find out and I think he mentioned in a recent video of his that he has a manager uh, for 100 Thieves so I don't know if they're co-managing it or if he's doing you know most of the work and then he just has the manager to maybe like book flights for people and you know do that kind of thing or um or you know if the manager is going to be doing some uh you know maybe marketing things for the team or, or whatnot maybe getting together uh, uh like official uh logos and and, and uh, shirts and apparel and things like that who knows uh, i don't know how the workload is split he obviously didn't say anything um he hasn't really done much of anything at this point because it is such a new project uh, but i was really relieved to find out that he did at least have a manager uh because you know this running a gaming organization it takes a lot of time effort and dedication as you can see from you know hex's life uh you know watching his vlogs and, and things like that and uh that's something i wanted to to, to get to <clears throat> is you know if Nadeshot is basically going to be playing the Hector role for this, you know, uh, team. Um, if he were doing it alone, I feel like it would have very strongly and negatively impacted his content creation because, you know, while he could still vlog, you know, his life and, and things like that, uh, his second channel would definitely uh, see, you know, come to a screeching halt in terms of gameplay uploads and, and let's plays and, and streaming for sure would take a massive hit. So I'm glad to see that he does actually have a manager, uh, you know, working with him and that he's not just doing this all alone. Uh, so yeah, so hopefully if the manager that he, I guess, hired or is doing this with, um, hopefully they are, you know, experienced and professional and I, and I bet they are because, you know, obviously Nade has uh, a lot to lose from this, you know, whole thing. He wants to make sure this is done as professionally and well as possible. So I'm sure he brought someone uh, on board that is very uh, professional, experienced, things along those lines. Um, and I'm really hoping that that's the case because uh, then he can, uh, you know, easily trust uh, uh, somebody else doing a lot of the work. And if that's the case, uh, you know, he can continue to focus on his own personal brand, right? Because that's what that's one thing that I was thinking of when he when he announced that he was making this team. You know, everyone's like, oh, cool, you know, nature, make a team, make a team, make a team. Uh, and, and people don't realize how much goes into managing like, you know, an, an organization just from from the, you know, marketing and content creation and, and uh, you know, booking flights and making sure that you have the the right roster <clears throat> and, and all that stuff you have to manage uh, you know multiple social networks um you have to work on building up the brand too that's like the hardest part obviously um so there's a lot of things that go into it you know dealing with sponsors things like that and, and the fact that he would have to do that on top of what he's already doing with his own brand is uh you know something that kind of was 
uh, concerning for me, but again, he apparently has a manager, so hopefully they can make that workload very reasonable, and hopefully it won't negatively affect his second channel and his main channel and things along those lines, but obviously these are things that I'm sure he has taken into account and he's thought about, and hopefully uh, we as the fans can actually not see a drastic uh, uh, hit to his content creation, although I'm sure there'll be some which is understandable and reasonable. The other thing too is I wonder how this is going to affect current Optic fans. Um, I do consider myself an Optic fan, I have been for over a year now. I know I haven't really been following competitive for that long, um, but when I did start this YouTube channel I did start to look into competitive Call of Duty and I did get to know a lot of, you know, the, the faces, the familiar faces, the staples and everything and obviously Optic. Uh, and you know, it was it's just, I'm an Optic fan. If I'm gonna watch an event, I hope that they win. So now I wonder people, you know, a ton, a ton, a ton of people started becoming optic fans because of nature you know they started watching competitive because of him because of his content creation and streaming on twitch way back in the day and, and all this stuff you know he was a huge part in building the optic brand in terms of fan base so you know i wonder how all of those people who you know watch all the tournaments hoping optic wins i wonder if all those diehard fans are now either going to switch over to 100 Thieves or if they're going to stay Optic fans and, you know, cheer on 100 Thieves from, from the sidelines or vice versa. Or maybe, you know, a lot of people will just watch the tournaments and hope that either one wins, you know, because it doesn't matter. Uh, I'd be interesting to see how that plays out and how the, you know, fans either split or just do nothing and they just, you know, support both teams, which is totally possible. You could totally do that. To be honest, that's probably what I'll do. I'm um, leaning more towards being, you know, just an Optic fan in general um, and that's only because I know the players on optic because they've been around you know crim uh, formal scump and uh, karma you know they've been around forever I they're very recognizable to me I know all their personalities uh, you know just from a content creator and a competitive standpoint I guess uh, and I've been kind of rooting for them for a while now so I'll probably keep rooting for them until we can you know uh, kind of build up these younger players on hunter thieves and uh, you know uh, get have make them make a name for themselves you know you know get themselves out there and until we can start to connect with those guys and see what they're all about I think uh, you know it's kind of you know obviously this is all new that's basically what I'm trying to say it's all new so we got to see where it goes if for some reason uh, anyone on that team is watching this video good luck guys uh, you know hopefully you guys can you know blow up make this you know hit the ground running uh, you know make this a very um, interesting time for Call of Duty competitive uh, you know and this is a very important time for 100 Thieves because it's the make or break point so you know hopefully uh, things start to go well I hope you know I wish Nate the best of luck in making this you know a really uh, giant and an important organization in not only esports but you know in or not only Call of Duty but esports in general um, hopefully you know they can he can do that and make that a possibility and it's gonna take a lot of work dedication and things like that the last thing that I want to say is that uh, this doesn't really come as too much of a surprise. I know that it, it, it is kind of surprising because he is cone, over, cone owner of Optic. He was given partial small ownership, uh, I don't know, a year or two ago uh, from Hector, probably like a year and a half ago. And um, it is kind of surprising in that regard, but at the same time, it's really not. Because if you think about it, you know, Nade Shot is so famous because of the fact that he was playing competitive, he was a good player, he was on a good team, uh, and that's how he got, you know, popular, mainly. People were watching him on main stage and things like that, and he was just an icon in the competitive Call of Duty scene. So now that he's been retired for a while, uh, he's been vlogging for this whole time, right? And a lot of people find that interesting. You know, he, he moved to California, he moved again recently, he got a new car or cars, <laughs> uh, and you know, all these big life events are happening, but those can only happen so frequently. Uh, and now that he's moved probably for the last time in a while, um, you know, I think that he's probably looking for something else, you know, the next step in his career. And this is a very natural next step because if things stay the same with him staying retired and him, you know, staying, uh, you know, vlogging and doing those kinds of things, slowly he will start to, uh, I guess, fade, I guess, in terms of not really fade away, but like, uh, you know, he, he wouldn't, he would no longer be at the peak of his channel. He would be more on the declining end. Uh, and that is just natural. That just happens to people. So 
anticipating that, I'm sure he uh, basically thought that, okay, what's the next step for my career? Am I going to go back into competitive and try and get on a team? Or am I going to focus on YouTube and try and do something new and innovative with my channel? Or I could, you know, start an organization, be the, the head leader of that, uh, focus on that and build up a brand that he can stay with, you know, because if you think about it, if you're the owner of an organization, that's not something that will necessarily fade away. You know, a YouTube channel is kind of like a television show. Some people blow up and then after a while, people are kind of tired of watching them, kind of like um, Epic Meal Time and, uh, you know, How To Basic, channels like that, FPS Russia, you know, um, channels like that have a peak and then after a while people just don't really watch anymore uh, and viewership declines and that happens to almost all channels at some point so you know that will eventually happen to Najat's channel and uh, for him I think this is a smart move because when you build up an organization and a, a thing like you know an, an esports organization um, you know that can go that can last for a very long time you can you can manage a business that's basically what it is an esports organization is a business you can manage a business when you're 40 50 60 years old but you really can't manage a a gaming youtube channel when you're that age uh, and target the same demographic i think it's unreasonable to think that his channel would you know be able to provide for him for the rest of his life living the current lifestyle that he lives so this is a very reasonable next step uh in this process and uh hopefully you know it blows up and he you know hops on the uh, manager scene for esports in a big way and that he's massively successful so that's just my two cents on the whole thing hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, my little rant on this whole business creation and marketing thing that is going on with hundred thieves and uh, if you guys are hundred thieves fans make sure you smack that like button and if you overall generally enjoyed the video or didn't enjoy the video leave a rating it doesn't matter which one I, I appreciate it always uh, if you could subscribe to my channel for more videos like this one and comments down below telling me what you think of this new team and that's about it guys thanks for watching i'm new york out peace